Good afternoon. Welcome to Women's Bible Study Live. We've been working through spiritual warfare, and tonight we're going to talk about forgiveness and unforgiveness and how we might not even be aware that we have these issues going on with unforgiveness, but how the devil can use that against us as a weapon and keep us from moving in who we really are. So before we begin, I'm going to sing a song that I wrote several weeks ago um, as I was praying for a friend. These are the words that came to me, but I feel like they're for me too, and they're for you too. And it's like God is speaking them to you and singing over you. Come to me, come to me. My darling, come to me. All that you are looking for is found at my feet. In humble adoration and acknowledging your weak, I will give you my all when you come. Darling, come to me. I have drawn you from many waters that were way too deep. And when you thought that you were drowning, it was me who set you free to reveal to you my refuge when you come. Thank you that you want us to come to you. Thank you that you beckon us to come to you. And you call us your darling. You love us with an everlasting love. You love us with an incomparable love. And there's really nothing like your love. We just praise you. 
We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for who we are in you. We thank you for the plans that you have to prosper us and not harm us, to give us a future and a hope. Lord, I just pray um, that your Holy Spirit goes before me and is my rear guard tonight. That the words that you want spoken and the words that you want left on women's hearts and minds are put there by you, by your spirit. Speak what's important. Speak what, what ministers. Speak what will bring healing and will set the captive free. We need you so desperately, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So thanks for joining. I um, got a little tongue-tied at the end of the song. But I wanted to remind you, remind us that um, God fashioned all of our days and his thoughts toward us are more than the sand at sea. That's what the Bible says. His thoughts toward us are more than the sand at sea and they're good. They're all good thoughts. So hmm, let's not forget that. I was um, telling Mark Miklas, who is one of the pastors at our church, what I was speaking on a few weeks ago, and I was telling him it was about forgiveness, and I was saying that I just see that as such a needed thing right now, not just in my own life, which it's an ongoing thing in my own life, but... If you look around at the world right now, it's such an unforgiving world. It's has so much bitterness and anger. And I think we really lack forgiveness. And sometimes I don't think it's very easy to tell the difference between the church or followers of Christ with forgiveness from the world. And I'm preaching to myself there. And Mark reminded me that, um, you know, when you say unforgiveness, the word unforgiveness, he reminded me that it's been said unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. And that truly is what unforgiveness is like and what unforgiveness does. So I, I was thinking about that and I was thinking back over my life and considering when I really experienced that kind of unforgiveness. And I was thinking about a time when I was in a band in Pittsburgh when I was younger and I worked with somebody in that band that used to say that person's dead. So we were out one time and they were like, oh, that person's dead. And I was like, what? This, this person that we knew died? And the band member said, no, that person's dead to me. You know, they ticked me off, they offended me, and they're dead to me now. And I'm going to treat them like they don't exist. And I just had never been around that before. Sure enough, when we went and played at the next place and that person, you know, this, the person that offended the band member was there, the band member truly treated them like they weren't alive, like they were dead. But the person that was really being hurt by that was the band member because you could see the hardness and the bitterness and the wall that at their young age, we were, you know, late teens, early 20s, they didn't, 
they had already started building a fortification of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. You could see it destroying them from the inside out. And that's what unforgiveness does. So Ephesians 4.26 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath or give place to the devil. So anger in and of itself is a natural emotion. Because it says, do not, you know, be angry, do not sin. It's what we do with anger that makes it a sin or not. One of the other quotes I had here was somebody named Dr. Emerin Egrix, and he's a pastor and PhD in um, family and child ecology. And he said it this way, I can experience hurt, but hate is my choice. So how we respond if something makes us angry, how we respond to that is what makes it sin or not. And hate is a sin. This is what one commentary says. When anger is an emotion of malice, jealousy, resentment, vindictiveness, hatred, or hatred because of personal wrongs, it is forbidden for a Christian. If a believer gives way to this wrath, he should confess it and forsake it quickly. There should be no nursing of grudges, no harboring of resentments, no carrying over of irritations, or anything that mars fellowship with God and our other brothers and sisters. And it should be immediately made right. You know, there's that scripture that says, as far as it depends on me, live at peace with all people. And we can't always do that quick, but it can be our intention to want to resolve things, sometimes in the right time. But it needs to be our intention to be like, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, I responded this way or this situation happened because of something I did or said or responded angrily. <clears throat> so I was thinking of the words used here. This uh, commentary used these words, nursing, harboring, and carrying over. And I was thinking, it says nursing of grudges. And I was thinking about when I nursed my babies and how you keep bringing the baby back to get fed and to get nourished and to um, be warm and have that attachment. And so, you know, if you nurse something, you're building it up. You're um, strengthening it. You're making it grow. And then I was thinking of the word harbor. And this picture, you know, a harbor... You think of boats coming into a harbor and they're coming into a safe space. Um, so we can, you know, pull these resentments into these safe recesses of our mind and let them mingle around and bob around with other resentments that are floating up there. It says that we shouldn't do that. And then I was thinking of the terminology they use for carrying over and how that's like a math equation carrying over irritations and if you know you know you're doing math and you're adding up columns um and you have to carry over because something in in the far right column is too big so you have to carry it over um, but what we do with anger is we take all of these irritations that we've built up and then we add it to the thing the person just did that really irritated us and then we come up with a really lopsided total because we are adding all of the previous things to it. And we can all do that. Um, <clears throat> so the point in saying all that is to give you word pictures, give me word pictures so that when I get irritated, I think about how do I handle it? Like, let's be aware of how we handle it because like... Ephesians 4.26 says we don't want to give place to the devil. We're learning about how to do spiritual warfare. So this is a big wide open space where we just let them in. 
um, it can be a big wide space that we're just unaware of. Oh, everybody gets mad or um, things like that. So it says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Let all bitterness be put away. Bitterness is a smoldering resentment. And I, I love that word picture because I've felt that. Have you? You just smolder. You're just, uh, you know. Um, so I've been really aware of that in my own life since I wrote all this down and, and spoke it out. It's a smoldering resentment, a sour attitude, an unwillingness to forgive, a harbored resentment that actually pre um, prevents reconciliation. Wrath means bursts of rage, violent passion, and temper tantrums. We see that in two-year-olds, but we've seen it in adults too, haven't we? Anger means grouchiness. I was like, wow, grouchiness. You know, that's kind of like smoldering, but not, it's like smoldering light. I don't know. I'm like, doesn't everybody get kind of grouchy? And we're like, oh, I'm just grouchy. Um, it can mean grouchiness. We have to be aware of it. Animosity, hostility. Clamor means loud outcries of anger, brawling, bickering, insults, wishing evil on others, meanness, spite, and using language that attacks people. And when I read that, I was like, isn't that just the, the you know, temperature of our culture right now our country it's wrong it is I we can't change it in an instant but we need to be we need to be the agents of change the world is not going to be the agent of change here Christians have to lead this I, insults attacking wishing evil on others you know just think of just politics how mean-spirited, how we maybe in ways we would never attack a person and dress them down and belittle them, belittle their intelligence, how we just so freely will even do that. And it's wrong. So I, I wrote here, has, has anyone of us not felt that, especially if you look at your Facebook feed? It's so available. It's so every on every side of us right now, especially right now. But God says to put these things away, to put them away. And it might not be an instant thing like I put these feelings away and I just get rid of them. I mean, there are injustices in the world and there are things that just make you so angry. There's um, injustice. Um, I have, I have a list actually I can read, um, you know, things that we stand for as Christians that we know are going on, um, just the things in politics or the things in the white house that, that are wrong, that we know are wrong. The things in, in, uh, the Supreme court where we're supposed to have justice and, it's anything but that. Um, like we actually have a justice department, but are they really executing justice? God knows. He knows. So um, like I was saying, it might not be like we can just be like, put it off and I'm, I'm fine. That doesn't bother me. Oh, I'm so happy. No, I actually used to be more like that. Um, as a young mom Christian. And um, I'm not saying to be fake. I'm just saying that we need to be aware of how we respond to anger. And we need to be giving it to God. Maybe we can't even do it ourselves. Maybe we get so angry we can't even process it. But we have to realize that God doesn't want us to be angry. Even if we feel anger. 
feelings and walking out what he wants us to do aren't always the same thing. I could forgive someone over and over and over and still have this feeling of something that rises up in me, but I'm like, God, it's still there. I forgive them. Now you need to do the rest. You need to clean up my heart and my mind and make it align with your truth. I forgive them as far as these just from the West. Um, when we are putting these things away, we should be turning them over and replacing them th with things like the virtues of walking in love and um, compassion, kindness, forgiveness, and mercy, and humility. Like I was saying, the world's not going to do that. It's the world. They're not going to walk in humility or kindness or compassion. Um, I mean, maybe people, there's do-gooders and there's a lot of good things done. But this um, integrity of walking in the truth and doing the things that God's called us to do, he's called us to do them. And he's created these things for us to walk in before the foundations of the world. So he gives us a lot of instruction. And we're human and we're not perfect. But we have to understand that this is going to be an undercurrent resolve in our lives that we should be able to recognize. It's an undercurrent resolve to be like, man... That thing that just happened really made me angry. And then just like I'm not shelving it, but I'm giving it to God right now. I'm giving it to God. God, I forgive that person. Like it, even if you have no feelings of forgiveness. But we know the truth and the truth has to set us free. And the truth has to have power. So um, there's a bunch of other other things that... I might take a few weeks to go over. I think that that's probably enough for now. But um, we are called to put off these things, put these things away that don't line up with what God calls us to be. And the world, the church should see a difference between the church and the world. We should be able to tell a difference that we don't react and respond like, you know, two-year-olds and have temper tantrums and that it's our ongoing undercurrent resolve in our lives to put off the things of the flesh, to put off the old nature and walk as the new man or new woman. And we can have lots of feelings and we can remind God, I have a lot of feelings about this. I feel really frustrated. I feel really angry still, but I forgive this person. I forgive what they've done to me. Show me, teach me Holy Spirit, how to walk that out, what to say, what not to say. But first and foremost, to be like very quick to be like, I forgive and that's my resolve. And God avenges, not me. And we can believe that and we can walk in it and we can have peace. Because if we feel like we have to handle all these things and work them out, we're not going to have any peace. And we're not going to be effective. <coughs> so I'm going to stop there. I just, um, I pray for you. I bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray that you have a great night. I pray that you have a great rest of your week. I know these things are really hard. Um, spiritual warfare is really hard. And it's hard for me. Sometimes it's easier than others. Like, I get excited um, about what God's doing. And He is doing. God is on the move. God is on the throne. And we have a lot of situations and a lot of things going on in our lives. But he hasn't left his directive. He's overcome the world by the blood of the lamb. And he tells us to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And not loving our lives unto death. 
So we just need to align ourselves with him and his ways and we will have the peace that surpasses all understanding that guards our hearts and minds. We will. So I just pray that all over you, bless you. <clears throat> Definitely leave comments. I want to know how and if this is affecting your life, if this is um, helpful and good and something that you need and desire in your life. So thanks for coming. God bless you.